I am uh, outside in the wilderness and we are here to not find beetles, but to actually consume them. I actually thought about eating these beetles in the car, but it got overwhelmingly hot, muggy and nasty. So I thought, why not take it out to the great outdoor wilderness and indulge in what I found at the supermarket, which came from nature. <laughs> so with that being said, let's try what a rhino beetle is. First one I picked out is a female, but I, it's only seasoned with salt, so <laughs> we'll get the actual bonafide taste of beetles and see how it is. Wow. <laughs> this thing kind of evaporated in my mouth and I have shards of exoskeleton scattered in every single crevice between my teeth <clears throat> and it's getting stuck in my throat. Honestly, the texture is probably the most surprising part about the beetle. The taste itself is, I want to say probably a really bad dried out shrimp without any of the nice seafood sweetness that shrimp has. Honestly, it doesn't taste that great. But with how amazing the macros are, I could recommend this to bodybuilders, including myself. No, I'm kidding. But um, that was the female beetle. I doubt the male beetle is going to change at all, but for full disclosure, we might as well try them. Let me, let me, fish, one, let me fish the big one out. But I think if they're going to make this a little bit more than just a gimmick and maybe something to casually eat, simply salt will not do. But here is the male rhinoceros beetle. It's slightly on the larger side, but let's see if this is any different from the female. Oh my God. It's honestly really hard to chew through. <laughs> With the additional long horns of the male rhinoceros, it makes it kind of harder to eat. It's much crunchier. And I think there's a little bit more of a funky taste to it. It's a taste I've never really had before. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of cleaning solvents for some reason. But uh, I'm not gonna lie, I did prefer the female beetle in comparison. The extra horns, it's getting everywhere in my mouth. It's honestly kind of hard to swallow everything. Would not recommend, but fun gimmick nonetheless. Eating those two beetles, very small, very light, maybe like three grams of food total, did yield me two grams of protein-ish, which is fantastic. <laughs> but that being said, I definitely do need a washer of something. And that is where we get this giant water bug cider to be honest there's barely any giant water beetle here i think you can call this the lacroix of the insect beverage world but um <laughs> let's see how it is i imagine it being good just because it's pretty much just cider and then they like pretty much dip the giant water beetle bug in there but let's see how it is you definitely need something to wash out all the exoskeleton that's dislodged in my mouth Yeah, I mean, if you serve this to me in a plain cup and call it apple cider, I would believe you and think there's nothing wrong with it. The smell is kind of funky. It does still taste or smell like apple cider, but like there, there's a little something going on. I would be a little skeptical about this drink, but I would chalk it off as maybe it's just like one of those health products with random bullshit ingredients which I guess is what it is. But uh, not bad. I would take this probably nine times out of 10 over the, uh, the Beatles itself. This is slightly stranger than the original product, but not bad. All right, with that being said, I feel like dried Beatles, oops. <laughs> I feel like dried Beatles, 
can only give so much flavor. And I thought, let's go around this beautiful flooded park here and try to find some live beetles to try out. So come on over with me. Let's look for beetles. And most of you guys are probably wondering, why am I looking for beetles in the day? The chance of finding the beetles during the day is much lower than at night. And that's because the one biggest benefit for looking for beetles during the day is to scout out which trees beetles will potentially feed on. And to do that, we're kind of just looking around and seeing potential areas of sap, like come over here, like something like that, it's super droopy and that could attract some beetles all the way up there. But we're kind of just making mental notes of these locations to kind of hone in on, to focus on, and hopefully we can find beetles there. It just kind of helps save time for when we actually go beetle hunting at night. So I'll be taking a look at some more trees, maybe something like this here too. Actually, the trees right now are being fantastic for in terms of beetles. Now, to be honest, it is kind of late. Ooh, there's a slug over here if you want to get a shot of that. <laughs> Getting a little distracted. But it is a little late for beetles. Now, my 2008 Honda Civic, I love the name so much, is still alive. So there are possibilities of Kabatonshi. But if we were to see a beetle, I expect maybe something more like Dorcas Rectus, the Koku Agata in Japanese. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can actually find at night. But for now, we'll just be looking around, seeing which trees we should focus on. Wow, actually, a lot of these trees are kind of in full bloom here. <laughs> Tonight might be a pretty good night if it doesn't rain. I'll be honest, there was a typhoon literally yesterday. So uh, the odds of that happening and having beetles active at night, uh, as long as it's not raining, it might be pretty good because they've been hunkered down yesterday and uh, are probably a little peckish. But speaking of being peckish, the, uh, holy cow, these trees are, yeah, tonight might actually be a good night. But speaking of being hungry and the beetle we just ate, it is uh, having an effect on me. So the aftertaste is very unpleasant, I'll be honest. And one of the biggest concerns for these kinds of alternative food sources is, I mean, of course, perception of the actual insect and eating it. But another is taste because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if it doesn't taste good, I frankly don't want to eat it, even if it's nutritional for you. And speaking of nutrition, it's actually crazy how nutritional uh, kabutomushi and just beetles in general are. Now, the actual beetle itself, you don't really eat as an adult as well as far as kabutomushi. I know um, I read a comment from a viewer that some places in South America eat whole Hercules beetles, which I think is so freaking cool. And I hope they do a little bit more than salt it. <laughs> but I would love to try it someday. But oftentimes these beetles are eaten as a larvae. And that's because, well, one, you don't have the issue of very, well, the texture is probably still strange, but the exoskeleton just getting everywhere in your mouth is honestly really uncomfortable. You are almost required to uh, <laughs> wash it down with something. Like my mouth is just full of shards and it was kind of terrible. But ooh, almost every single tree in this area is looking good to provide a feast for beetles. So it'd be pretty exciting coming back here at night and seeing what we can unravel. Yeah, maybe like right here and there. The only problem is it doesn't smell super sweet. And that's probably, we don't see anything, the reason why. Because this could be a, it's probably a much higher concentration of water rather than actual sugars because of how much water these trees probably have received over the past two days. It's been raining like heck. Like if we look over to this field, where you see water is supposed to be park. It is quite flooded, but yeah. But let me go back to beetle nutrition. My ADHD is going a little crazy if I even have it self-diagnosing here. But, um, but beetle nutrition, there's been several studies about the nutritional content of beetle larvae and specifically 
there's a remarkable amount of kabutomushi because they're one of the, I think in this one study I looked at, they're one of the five registered insects, official um, edible insects of Korea. And they've been shown to be anti-obesity in rats. They've been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects. They've been shown to be anti. One other thing I forgot, edit it right here. And they're chock full of, well, first of all, protein. The content is pretty nuts. From this beetle bag that I just ate, technically, ooh, <laughs> but technically, it wasn't Kabutomishi, it was Xylotrupus Gideon, but close enough. The packaging was kind of deceptive, I'll be honest. There was Alan Marina Dicomera on it instead of whatever, whatever. But yeah, macronutrients, crazy. Protein content off the roof. It's honestly nuts. But micronutrients too are pretty nuts as well. I'll throw the study up right over here, maybe, I don't know but full of potassium, magnesium, of course, calcium. It's honestly really good for you. But yeah, the, now the one issue, and this is going back to the taste. Now, when I ate the whole beetles, the taste itself wasn't too bad. The texture was probably the more off-putting part with it just completely saturating your mouth <laughs> with beetle shards. But the taste is not pleasant, I'll be honest. I think you need something heavily seasoned i can imagine maybe dorito dust might work <laughs> who knows i think it'd be a decent replacement for chips if we can get the taste down but the aftertaste is also pretty bad like i don't know how to describe it there's some kind of weird bitter earthiness to it maybe like a mushroom gone bad but the aftertaste is quite unpleasant i really want to wash it down with something i actually like like maybe some sort of soda i think the bicarbonate would also help relieve my mouth. But this is not just an issue for the adult beetles I consumed. Actually, one of the biggest problems with Kabutomushi larvae is that they have what researchers say a peculiar off taste. Now, what that means, I'm not really sure, but it must be pretty bad because every single study I've seen about the Kabutomushi larvae and in relation to consumption, is that it has a very, very weird taste to it that is going to be a huge hurdle when it comes to actually incorporating it into anyone's diet. Now, although the nutrition is really good, I think taste is pretty important to try to incorporate into anyone's you know, lifestyle. But if you're interested in me trying out cup of larvae, let me know because <laughs> Shockingly, there's a lot of research into how to get rid of that off taste. So one of the big things I'm excited for is maybe applying that research, maybe doing a little experiments of my own and trying to mitigate that whatever off taste there is. So let me know. That's all about the nutritional content of larvae. Now we'll kind of, uh, there's a bicycle coming behind you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no worries. But. We'll be back here at night to see if we can actually find some live specimens to fine dine and maybe wine. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be back. Okay, it's the middle of the night and unfortunately, it did freshly rain a little bit afterwards. So there's a very good chance we won't see any bugs at any of these potential hotspots here. But at the very least, we should see a decent amount of slugs. I found an especially slender slug here. And although earlier in the video I did eat a fun creature, this is definitely something you should never consume. Be warned. You know, this might be the only critter we're gonna see tonight, so let's just savor this moment and look at that beautiful cicada just sleeping away on the tree. Not at all what we're looking for, but a pleasant surprise nonetheless. And an unpleasant one right there. <laughs> at first I thought the frogs were kind of cheering me on, but after all these 
fruitless and futile searches of uh, trees that I scouted out earlier today. It almost sounds like more croaks of <laughs> mockery or something. It's a little unfortunate. The only beetle that's out and about right now is of course one we don't want to see. You know, although it doesn't really make good content, I still think it's valuable to uh, show the reality. And sometimes that uh, things doesn't necessarily go according to plan. And I mean, I had hope, but sometimes you only get so much. But you know what? The process of finding beetles is so much fun that honestly, small setbacks like these are just that. Just small setbacks until we find the next beetle. You know, the saddest part about all this is now I gotta eat 2008 Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs>